Shelby Mason is the community liaison for the Miles Correct Cancer Services, and we're going to be talking about what goes on at the Miles Correct Cancer Services and the upcoming games in the Katie which if you haven't heard of, you're going to hear about them today. Welcome, Lacey. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It is so good to have you here today. I always like talking about the Miles Correct um, Cancer Services. It, that's a new name where the name has changed. It changed a few years ago, yeah, yeah, but a lot of people still know us as, you know, the Miles Correct Center, so we're trying to make sure people are aware it's now Miles Correct Cancer Services. Okay. So I have to stop and think. Yeah, no, yeah, a lot of people do. A lot of people do. <laughs> Why did you change your name? Um, I think the, the reasoning behind it was mainly because when you hear the word center, you figure like treatment center, and we had some confusion with um, people thinking that we actually did treatment at our office, which we don't. We focus on non-medical support services, so we don't have any doctors or treatment rooms or anything like that at our office, so I think they just wanted to be able to make the, the distinction with the name change. And I think that is important, and it's much clearer now because you do have an array of services. We do, you know, we do. Lot. We're going to get into that in a minute. but. Before we talk about what you do, how did you come to be? What is the story behind the Miles Perrette? Well, it's a it's a very community related story. You know, the Perrettes lost their eight year old son Miles to an inoperable brain tumor, um, and they wanted to try and make something positive come from that experience and find a way to help families in our area that were in in the same circumstances. And the center was kind of born from that. Uh, it's grown tremendously since it started in two thousand and two. Uh, we actually just celebrated our 10th anniversary in June. Hard to believe. I know, I know. Really hard to believe. And you know, looking looking back, we've looked at you know we compiled numbers and we keep statistics on the clients that we serve. We have ho helped over 8,000 families in Acadiana, which is kind of huge. Um, That's a huge. Yes. Amount. And you know, yes. I, I may be wrong about this, but I seem to remember hearing that we have a fairly high degree of cancer in Acadiana right. or in Louisiana. Right. So. Um, I think that makes us all the more important and maybe all the more poignant, huh? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And the whole point behind opening this organization was to provide a place of, of hope and comfort and warmth. And yeah, we provide many, many things. When, you know, when I started with the organization, I was completely kind of mind boggled by, you think you know what Miles Perrette Cancer Services does and what they have to offer. And then when I started working there, there was just this huge array of things that I didn't know about. But the biggest thing that we want to focus on is being a place of, like I said, hope, where people can come and know that they're going to be around people who understand what they're going through. And I think if you talk to some of our clients, that, that mission is accomplished. So how do you build hope? We provide as much opportunity as we can for our clients to interact with other clients. You know, a lot of our, some of our service coordinators are survivors themselves. We have volunteers who have been around for years and years and years who were former clients and they want to give back and continue to stay in touch with people who are starting the journey that they, that they fought. So working with peers as peer matchups really is a very powerful healing tool, don't you think? It is. It definitely is. I think just the mindset of knowing that someone else has been yeah. through it, someone else has here. survived it, exactly, that that's very comforting and that there's people who understand the struggles that they're going to go through and who are there to provide support and to listen and to help out any way that they can. And the cancer services are for people of all ages, right? I mean, I all know ages. I was a child, but they're right. not limited to just serving children, am I right? No, we are open, like you said, to all ages. We do have some pediatric clients. Uh, it's a small percentage, thankfully. We're glad about that. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, but we do have an entire side of our office. This is primo primarily focused on our pediatric clients, and then we also, you know, anybody diagnosed with cancer. We don't have any financial eligibility requirements. The only thing that we verify is the cancer diagnosis, and we're able to provide all of our services and programs at no cost to our clients, thanks to this amazing community that because we live in. Because this program is 100% community supported. Am and I we right? don't receive any government funding, and we don't report to any higher organizations. So every dollar that we take in is spent right here in Acadia, and it stays here to serve the families within the 10 parishes that we serve. See, I think that makes this whole thing even more special. It is, it's a very, a very unique organization. Mm -hmm. There aren't many, there aren't many anymore who can claim that and that don't have to rely on uh, governmental funding to, right. to function. We've been very, very lucky to be able uh, to be in the community that we're in. Well, you know, you've been around now for 10 years. 10 years. And so I'll tell you, you gotta be, you gotta be giving something back for people to keep supporting you. And so you're right. doing a really, really, really good job. Oh, well, thank you. That's, that that's needs, what we hope for. That means a lot. So 
Aside from hope and a safe place, you do some kind of concrete services. Right? Absolutely. We do a lot of concrete services. Um, you know, when clients come in, they're referred by their doctor. So like I said, we do confirm the ca cancer diagnosis, but that's really all that we're we're concerned and with. And any cancer, right? You're not any cancer, cancer, absolutely. No, no, any cancer. And we focus not just on the individual, but on the family. So things that we can provide are things like wigs and head coverings for those that are going to be undergoing chemotherapy. You know, a big part of that is hair loss, and that's a very traumatic experience, especially for women who, who go through that. Uh, so we have a huge selection of what we call our uh, wig boutique. Um, and they can come in, try on wigs, hats, scarves, turbans, and take home you know anything that they find. We also have a lot of mastectomy items. Uh, we have an entire room designated with items just for, for our breast cancer clients. Uh, we also have, we can provide things like nutritional supplements if they're prescribed by a doctor medical supplies, uh, just anything that we can provide to help ease what they're going to be going through, we try and try and offer. So those are some of the things that, you know, things that you can walk away with. Those are some of the things that we're able to give you. We also have a lot of services. So we have uh, art, ex or what we call our expressions on canvas art class every other month where we have our Dana Manley, who's a local artist, comes in and conducts that class for us. We also have spa nights every other month where our clients can come in and get pampered for the, oh, nice. pampered for, for an evening, absolutely. We have uh, our wellness center, which is basically a gym where they can come in and get individualized attention. They get a release from their doctor and then meet with either our director or assistant director of that center and we put together an individualized plan specifically for them based on their doctor's recommendations, based on you know the treatments that they're gonna be going through and then they can come in at their leisure and do their workout. We also offer yoga and Pilates classes, group exercise. Uh, we offer what we call our Miles Strong program. You know, you're right. I thought I knew Miles Perez. Yeah, I'm telling you, you have no idea. Uh, our Miles Strong program is basically a rehabilitation uh, program where our clients can commit for 10 weeks. They come twice a week for an hour and a half, and it has nutrition classes, exercise programs, and things to help them continue to make those healthy lifestyle changes after they're done with their, their treatment. Uh, we also offer support groups. We have our breast cancer support group, our caregiver support group, and then our scripture vitamins, which is a faith-based uh, support group. And then we also have our mobile miles, which is our mobile unit that's on the road three to four days a week in seven of the 10 parishes that we serve. And basically there's a small inventory of everything that we have in our office on that mobile unit. One of our service coordinators goes out with it any day that it's on a road so that clients who can't make it to our office have somewhere to go. Wow. And I'm sure I left a few things out yeah, in there, yeah. but yeah, that there's a lot. Astounding. It really, really and it's is. All being supported locally. So, do you have volunteers that maybe come in and do? We have tons of volunteers, um, and a lot of them are former clients. Uh, a lot of them are family members of former clients who want to find a way to give back. So, yeah, we always have volunteers at our office. They're helping man the front desk. They're helping with things like getting ready for games of Acadiana and some of our other events that we do we love our volunteers we rely on them heavily and wouldn't be where we are without them yeah, yeah they're a true gift to have and because of their own personal experiences they bring a certain passion and a certain compassion with them i think that, absolutely you, know, you just can't buy absolutely <laughs> you cannot, that is a very true statement so let's talk about the games of acadia is that your primary funding that service? is our that is our signature fundraiser we do have several throughout the year but this is definitely our biggest mm -hmm. this is actually the 12th annual games this the so event itself before. actually started before the organization was formed which is a very backwards way uh, that things normally happen normally you figure out you want to open this organization and then you find a way to right. get the funding for it this was the exact reverse That's what happens um, when you have visionaries at the helm, exactly right? exactly so the first event was so successful it allowed the center to be open um, so yeah this year is our 12th annual it's going to be Saturday August 18th I'm going to hold up a poster yes our wonderful poster uh, every year song. we get a local artist to do our commemorative poster this year it was done by Bonnie Camos she did a love fantastic it. job I love it. I love fantastic it. job we were actually able, able to um, unveil this at the June art walk at gallery 549 downtown um, so a huge thank you to her she did a really great job oh, just kind of encompassing everything that we're poster. about absolutely like absolutely so it you know we, we try and keep our office upbeat and happy and cheerful and colorful and then of course games is just a day full of energy and fun and, um, and so she tied everything in really 
really well. She and could the logo have done is a better play job. with the purpose. Play with the purpose. Yeah, absolutely. And that that tops the uh, the Rock Hill. So yeah, yeah, we we awesome. love this poster. It's fantastic. It's really, she did really a great, great job. So I can't imagine that there are too many people that aren't familiar with the games of Acadiana. But I bet you a lot of people don't really have any idea how big and exciting they are. It's it's a huge a huge event. Uh, we take over the entire Cajun Dome and Convention Center. Every inch of free space <laughs> is used up. Uh, we have over 60 games and activities for families to come and participate in. Uh, anything from things like a monster spider jump, which I cannot wait to get on. It's this trampoline, and you get harnessed in with bungee cords. So it's not just like jumping on a normal trampoline. It's extreme trampolining um <laughs> we have things That's like big people, huh? oh anybody can oh, anybody get on there right, oh yeah on. absolutely yeah. uh we have things like dodgeball uh laser tag we're actually introducing a life-size Ang angry birds game this year that we've worked <laughs> on uh hula hoop contests, um, you name it, we probably have it. There's just a ton of stuff going on. Who comes up with all these ideas? I mean, this is really very creative. Yeah, it's uh, it's a very unique event, and th there's a lot of collaborating that goes on. You know, our sponsors sometimes come to us. They have a game idea in mind, so they kind of say this is what we want to do, and they put the plan together. Some might have some mm -hmm. options and need some help figuring out, and then some might say, you know what, just come up with a game for us and we'll take it on. So sometimes we have to get creative and do a little research and kind of see what we can come up with. Um, so yeah, there's tons to choose from. There's something for all ages. And the absolute best part is there's no admission fee to anybody that comes. Um, all of the money is raised through our sponsorships. So you're, you're not gonna be charged an admission fee. So when you go, what can you expect to have happen? Well, the, get, the day gets kicked off at 10 o'clock with our opening ceremonies. So we do some introductions. We have what we call our survivor walk, uh, which is where any cancer survivor gets acknowledged and they get to do a lap around the Cajun Dome. Um, and we just get to, you know, applaud, applaud them. Applaud them. Yeah, and absolutely. Say, you know, and again, seeing the survivors brokes hope for everyone. Absolutely. Do they get t-shirts or anything? They do, uh -huh. they do, they do get a t-shirt. Okay. Um, so that's how the day starts. And then uh, that usually lasts, I think about 20 to 30 minutes. And then, you know, game day gets kicked off and it's a free for all, basically. There's sure. so many things going on. Um, and we just want people to come out, have a good time. And it's, it's really a day of celebration. Just come out and support the organization and its mission and come out and celebrate the people who inspired all this to be created. So it's really funded, I, I, for some reason I thought there was an admission fee. So no, the there's not. A lot of people think there yeah, is. There is so not. Take that off the table. Absolutely. So it's a great family day, isn't it? It is. It's a, it's a ve very family focused day. Um, so what if you're just a grown up and you just want to go play anyway? Come on, come on down. That's fine. <laughs> that is fine. Out. That's right. That's right. Because um, I think there's a little kid in a lot of us. Oh, I'm, I can't wait to, to go play some games. Um, yeah, so it's open to anybody, uh, and it's just, it's just a, fun, a fun day. Now, who, who sponsors this? I mean, how, do, how does the sponsorship We work? have so many sponsors. Um, you know, it's just people who know about what we do, and it's either personal sponsors or businesses who want to find a way to get involved. Um, and they say, you know what, what can, what can we do? So they have some options to choose from. We'll get them set up with a game. Usually not only do they put up, you know, dollars, but a lot of times their employees will come and help manage the games right. and volunteer the day of. So they're very, very involved. And thanks to them, the majority of the money is raised before game day even happens. So it's, this is, game day is not a pressure day of, let's see what we can do yeah. to increase the profit. It's already done. So it truly is just a, a day to come and have some Oh, what a great idea. Fun. What a great yeah. way to do a fundraiser. Absolutely. So uh, this is the primary fundraiser or the, the signature event for right. the, uh, the Miles Perrette Cancer Services. But how else are you funded? Where does the money come from? Because this is not an inexpensive operation. No, it's not. We do, unfortunately, we do have a lot of clients. Um, it's good and bad, you know, in, in both ways that there are so many people in our area that 8, are, that are 10 years. Affected. Yeah. Um, but the good news is, is that more and more cancer patients are hearing about us and coming to see us. So our numbers okay. are increasing every year. Um, 
but the majority of our money is raised through fundraising. So this is our signature fundraiser. This happens usually every August. Uh, we also have a 5K in November called Camellia Crossing. We do it on the night before Thanksgiving. Again, it's a family fun event. Um, we shut down Camellia Boulevard, so some people get unhappy with us about that, but it's for a good cause. Yeah. Uh, so we do the run, and then there's uh, entertainment and food and everything in Town Square at uh, River Ranch okay. after. Um, and then every other year, we have a benefit concert that's held in conjunction with the Light Co. exhibition. Um, when they're here, you Exactly. Okay. Um, so those are our three big fundraisers. Uh, we also have things like our Change for Miles program, which is we focus mainly on elementary schools in the area. And we go and we give them a presentation and we kind of tell them about what we do. Um, and it serves two purposes that makes them ambassadors for our program. and it also helps to give them a way to give back to the community and start doing that at a young age because yeah. that's so important. It really is. Um, so they all leave with a little change bottle and go collect loose change. Um, and that program has been unbelievably successful. Um, so they'll run the campaign for a week or two and then on what we call the dumping day, we go back with a big uh, inner trust truck and armored, you know, the armored truck with the guards and they get to dump their change bottles. Oh. And yeah, so it's a really fun, <laughs> a fun program and the kids just absolutely love it. Uh, and then we also have our Miles of Hope retail donation program, which a lot of businesses or several businesses are, are in the middle of right now. Um, it's a retail donation program where when you go into an, an establishment, you can donate a dollar or more to us and you get your name written on, you know, the tags mm -hmm. that get hung. Um, so that's going on there as well. And then, of course, we have private donations and um, just people who want to support us who, right. who donate right. donate to us. But the majority of our, our, fun, our funding comes from fundraisers. So it's important for us to get behind the fundraisers because it's, Absolutely. Not, like, it's not like you have a federal grant somewhere that's right. going to keep this program going for, for our community. Exactly. So you run, I guess, by a board of directors. And do you have like a committee that, that kind of oversees all these fundraisers? Because I know how much work that is. Well, the staff um, does the majority of the planning, I will say, for you know the, the fundraisers, but our volunteers definitely help us okay. pull it off. We would not be able to do it without them. Um, there have been people who have, you know, some of our, our volunteers have been involved with games since the first one and are still around today, so they know the ropes. They've been around longer than some of the staff has. I, I can so, well imagine that's right. true. So, yeah. you know, their input is very, very valued, and we rely on them very, very heavily to make sure the day is a successful one. So do other communities do things like the games? or Because, again, I've never heard of it anywhere but here. And, yeah, and not, you know, not that I, I've never heard of anything either, and one of, you know, one of our big things is that we want to be unique. We, we don't want this to be easily replicated. We want this to be what... Miles Perrette Cancer Services is known for. This is our our big day, big event. Um, so every year we're introducing fresh games. We want to have new options for sponsors. We want to. We don't want things to get too um, stale. Yeah, too stale. Yeah. So we try and keep things new and exciting. Introduce a few new games. Try and get new sponsors involved. Pull in more volunteers to get more exposure. Um, so yeah, but I've never heard of an event quite like this before. Mm -hmm. So how did they come up with the idea? Do you know? You know, I'm not. I'm not sure. It's it's definitely changed a lot since it first started. I don't think it originally started as this big, huge event. Yeah, I don't think so did, either. Right? I, I think, think it was a few smaller yeah. games and events that were put on, and it just sort of evolved um, into what it is. You know, into what it is today, and it's it's kind of incredible. <laughs> it really, now you're really new. Is. This is your. This will be your I first year. I am new. At the game. I, did, I just started in about mid March. This is my. This is going to be my first game. So Are you I, excited? I am excited and a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I'm very excited. I think it's going to be a fantastic day, and I'm really happy to be be a part of it. So how do you manage all the people? Because you know, I, I always have visions of mayhem. You know, with with all the games and the space that the games take, and you know, the the things that have to happen around the games, and then you have right. all these people. Right. How do you manage all that? You know, I kind of like to think of it as organized chaos. There you go. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people we estimate. We, there is no registration process, so we don't have an actual count of every single person that comes through that day. But we estimate that for the past several years, we've had at least 10,000 participants. <laughs> that's not including volunteers. That's not including staff. That's, in, that's just people who come. Um, so it, it is. It's kind of a, a crazy day, and you have people all over the place. But, you know, it works. It's been done for so long, and there mm -hmm. have been, like I said, the volunteers who come back year after year after year know what works, know what doesn't, know why things are done a certain way. So, again, it goes back to that input and 
um, just people who have had the experience of managing this They've monstrosity, grown up. They've essentially. Grown up with it exactly. In, in a way. Exactly. So we build on it every year. We learn every year, and we just fine tune it as you know as we as we need. So sponsors can will sponsor a game. That's where a lot of the sponsorships right. Come right, in, a game right? or one of our activities, like we have our survivor area, and we have um, different different options for them to, to choose from. Like there's a change for miles stand set up there, okay. and then um, so there's a lot of different options for our sponsors to choose from. And there are opportunities for people to donate while they're there. Absolutely, we have what we call our Miles E Mart, which is we have a lot of uh, like T-shirts and posters and some really neat little things uh, to help promote Miles Perrette. So that's definitely a, a way to donate. We have what we call our Flags of Hope program set up also where you can buy a flag in honor of uh, in memory of wow. celebrating you know anyone that you know that's been diagnosed with cancer that's, so that's another opportunity so yeah there's definitely ways to to make donations and we definitely encourage that uh, throughout the day okay now in terms of just the the, the miles per cancer services you have it seems to me because i've been doing shows with with different organizations that work with cancer survivors for years your role in in the community in the in the survivor community has has shifted i think over the years in, in terms of just playing a more active and being a more active and collaborative partner right how how is that working what's going on with that well you know we've done a lot of met, uh, outreach to our medical partners to make sure that they know that we're there and to make sure that they're letting their patients know that okay. we're here, you know, so we make them aware of the services that we offer when we get new ones. Um, we There are small, certain items that we can actually give to our medical partners to distribute to to their patients. Um, and then also with the mobile unit, you know, that's been huge, really being able to get out into the community. And because, you know, one of the problems is, is that sometimes people who don't necessarily live in Lafayette, or even sometimes people, those that do live in yeah. Lafayette don't have transportation uh, to get to us. Or they just don't feel good I'm and thinking. don't have the energy, you know, to yeah. to come all the way to Lafayette, or they don't have the time. You know, they're dealing with trying to work through doctor's appointments and treatments and all those sorts of things. So the mobile unit's been a huge help to be able to get to those people and to reach those people and to let them know that that we're here and that we're going to do everything we can to make sure that we help them in any way that we can. So the mobile unit will make house calls. Not house calls. It'll go okay. to uh, like, like local, Walmart like or... local facilities. Okay. We'll partner with our with our medical offices, okay. um, and we'll park kind of at a hospital or a treatment center in in a certain parish or city for that day. So you serve all of Acadiana. Yes, ten ten parishes. The ten parishes mm -hmm. of Acadiana. So you have a wide. We do. We have geographic a geographic area. We do. We so do. How long have you had the mobile unit? Because you're right. It's a really really great idea. I want to say since two thousand and. Eight, okay. I think is when that okay. that hit the road I, I believe and you know the the need for it was because when we sat down and look at numbers in terms of where our clients come from um, over 60% of them reside outside of Lafayette no um, surprise there right so um, it, it, it's huge that's a huge percentage that we need to yeah. be able to make sure that we're reaching so in terms of like support groups and things like that, are they only in Lafayette? Are you able to yeah, those are Those are just held at our office. Okay, we okay. have our uh, breast cancer support group and our caregiver support group and then also our scripture vitamins, uh, which is a faith-based support right. group. Uh, all, all three of those are held at our office. And where is your office? We are <laughs> um, at 2130 Kali Saloom Road. We're at the corner of Kali Saloom and Marshall. Um, people used to have a hard time finding us. We're actually in the Lord's After Hours building, but in honor of our 10th anniversary, uh, we got some beautiful new signage, so we're very Yay. easy to find Yay. now. Yeah, we had a, a big open house. Uh, to kind of celebrate the event, we had over 150 people come through, and we were giving tours and kind of showing people, you know, what we do and what we're all about. So we figured we need to make sure they knew where to find us. I so think it uh, would help. yeah, yeah. So we're very easy to find now. And you've taken, I think, from what you've told me, a, a rather holistic approach to to helping people live with and survive cancer. Everything from nutrition to spirituality mm -hmm. to, to taking care of caregivers. So. Do you see anything very briefly, anything new on the horizon, or is it just to keep watering the seeds that are planted? You know, right now, I think, um, especially with the focus, we're, in, we're kind of in fundraising mode right, right now. Right. We have I games right are, now, yeah. and then we have Camellia in, in November. 
Um, so that kind of occupies the second half of the year. So I'm not aware of any big changes coming, but that doesn't mean that, that they're not. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of these things are evolutionary. You know, you just Absolutely. kind of see a need and, and you start kind of... Right, and that's kind of how things happen. And a lot of our programs have gotten started that way. We have a, our Giving Tree program, which is our Christmas program, where we can help out with getting Christmas presents for our clients that have children. Yeah. Um, and that stemmed from a client experience who had just been diagnosed and uh, heard a commercial after she had dropped her kids off from school one day uh, saying, you know, four days until Christmas and realized she hadn't done anything. So she shared that story with us and that program was born. Uh, we have our Smiles for Miles program, which are family outings we do every month for our families just to kind of spend some time together with other families and get away from the day-to-day -day life, the treatments and the doctors. And, you know, lots so. of great things. Absolutely. We're out of time, Lacey. Thank you so much for being here. Serious? We're serious. <laughs> serious. It has flown by. But thank you yeah. so much oh, for being thank here. Thank you all so sharing. much for having me. Um, I really this. appreciate it. This be sure great. to go to the games. They're going to be August 18th here at the KG Dome. Thank you, Lacey. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching the extra.